When it comes to racism, don't worry, America, we're not the only ones. Here at Decoded, we're all about examining the intersection of race and pop culture in interesting and funny ways. But because I'm American, this show is largely from an American perspective, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, except week after week, we get comments along the lines of, why is America so obsessed with race? Or so glad I don't live in America, we don't have racism like that here. As wonderful as it would be to have a country without racism, those just don't exist. In reality, racial inequality is a global issue. So let's take a little tour. Oh God, this thing is heavy. Number one, China. Around 92% of China's population is considered part of one ethnic group known as Han Chinese, and the rest are ethnic minorities. And generally speaking, homogeneity isn't so good for racial attitudes. Anti-black sentiment in China surged in the 80s when the Chinese government gave scholarships to African students in China. A lot of Chinese citizens hated their government giving money to foreigners, and so began a slew of anti-African protests all over China. Another slightly stranger example of anti-black attitudes is that several Chinese posters for the film Star Wars The Force Awakens minimized or completely erased John Boyega. On some posters, even Lupita Nyong'o's CGI character was taken out. Now we're reaching a whole new dimension when we're racist against a CGI character. Use the Force. It, it, except when the force is racism. Number two, Argentina. Argentina is no stranger to racism. In Argentina, the Spanish word negro, which refers to black people, sometimes gets used to describe laborers and poor people in general, regardless of race. Mixing class and race into a big old racist cocktail. No thanks, I'm driving. And it's not just anti-black sentiment. In 2015, after a meeting with Chinese investors, the Argentinian president tweeted a racist comment, making fun of the investor's accents by switching her R's and L's, and asking, did they only come for lice and petroleum? Ooh. I mean, would you want the leader of your country feeling comfortable saying completely racist things? <laughs> Sorry, there was a bigot in my throat. Number three, Japan. In 2014, a banner was hung on the entrance of a major Japanese soccer stadium that read, Japanese only. And in 2015, criticism exploded online after Ariana Miyamoto became the first half black Miss Japan. One critic even said, Japan should be represented by a pure blood. Yikes. But it's not just foreigners. Discrimination among Japan's own ethnic groups is a problem too. Take the Burakumin. People in this minority group were formerly at the bottom of the caste system, and to this day often get stereotyped as criminals and have a harder time finding employment, though most citizens outside this group will say that racism doesn't happen. Number four. Australia. Australia has a long, dark history of race conflicts with the Aboriginal people. Similar to the treatment of Native Americans, the British settlers in Australia treated the indigenous people as subhuman, and many of them were killed in large numbers by disease and massacres. In the 20th century, they were put into missions and forced into unpaid labor. Only as recently as 1975 was a non-discrimination act passed. But unfortunately, racism against Aboriginals is still rampant. Systemic discrimination means the indigenous people are victims of racial profiling. Only about 2% of the population is Aboriginal, and yet they make up a whopping 27% of those incarcerated in Australia. Australia also has problems with its Asian student population. The bullying, assault, and killing of Indian students in Australia has even gotten the name curry bashing. Anti-Indian sentiment got so bad that in 2010, the Indian government actually issued a travel advisory for Indian residents going to Melbourne. Number five, the Netherlands. The Dutch police force racially profiles a lot of people who don't look like they're from the Netherlands. An Amnesty International report in 2013 confirmed that many Dutch officers use things like age, skin color, and ethnicity to determine who looks suspicious. <gasps> Genetics used to justify racism? What a thought! When talking about the Berber ethnic groups of the Netherlands, one Dutch police officer was recently quoted berating them, saying the Berbers find it easier to live in the streets because of a genetic trait. And who is this officer? Well, he's the 2015 head of the diversity and discrimination budget for the Dutch police. Probably should have done a background check on that guy. So the good news is Americans aren't alone in the fight against racism. The bad news, racism is everywhere. But you have to acknowledge the system first in order to dismantle it. While there's nothing wrong with taking pride in your home country, it's important to remember that no nation is perfect. We've all got a lot of work to do. So where are you from and what are the global stories that you think matter? Tell us in the comments below and we'll see you next time right here on Decoded. Mom, Dad, I wanna go to Trump University. Could I have $35,000? 
Oh, it's not legally allowed to be called a university? Oh, the former New York Attorney General called it a scam? But it says I can turn my idea into a money machine. Books can't lie. 